Hello everyone, this is Walter Fate, and I'm back to once again bring you a video about Christine Weston Chandler. This is the second in this series. I will link to the first, my analysis on Chris Chan and the LGBT community, in the description. As in that one, I'll be using a mix of pronouns here, depending on which time period we're talking about. I apologize if it gets a little confusing, but let's just get started with, is Chris Chan delusional? Let's start with a recent Facebook post from the 22nd of July this year. I am only going to say this once for those who may think me as delusional, crazy, or shit like that. I am not delusional, crazy, or anything of the sort. I have my own magic powers that I am still learning about for myself, for my family and allies. I've already talked with psychiatrists and therapists years ago, so any new such meetings would be a very moot point. Okay, Christine has just told us that she's not delusional and that going to a psychiatrist is pointless because she's already done it before. Interesting. Most people would think to avoid talking about their magic powers when they're trying to convince someone they're not delusional. Alright, we're going to go through a list of events that bring into question just how much Christine believes in Quickville and the cast of Sonichu. First off, Chris believed in Santa Claus until he was well into his 20s. It's been over a week since my suspension. I am depressed, lonely, sad, and bored. I have nowhere to go to attract a boyfriend-free woman. I'll be writing to Santa Claus this year, hoping that he will bring me one. There's actually a video of him showing that he bought a present for the girlfriend Santa was supposed to be bringing for him. I mean, really, Bob and Barb? You couldn't tell him he, before he took it this far? Chris also has claimed for years to have been on the varsity basketball team in high school. Of course, meaning he was a water boy in his freshman year. One of his biggest problems, in my opinion, is that if things work out for him once, he expects the same thing to happen again and gets very angry when it doesn't. As many of you know, he won a thousand dollar Sega shopping spree as a 12 year old after watching Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. So when he entered a very obscure contest for Parappa the Rapper with an absolutely abominable video with hilarious editing, he went off on an absolute vendetta against the eventual winner, Adam Stackhouse. He accused everyone of cheating despite the numerous ways in which he was cheating. Sadly, this behavior isn't even over. After a 4chan user bought her Sonic Totem, an important relic in Christery, for $1,500, Christine seemed to develop an even more overinflated sense of what her relics are worth. This is known as the Classic. It's the shirt Chris was wearing in his original video addressed to 4chan, and many others. It was believed lost in the house fire, but eventually she managed to find it in a damp trash bag full of clothing, considerably fire damaged and moldy. After poorly mending it herself, she then listed it on eBay for 12,000 fucking dollars. Of course, the auction went up past 25,000, but the money was never paid to her. She has been seen wearing it as recently as too many games. Which definitely went well, by the way. I'm not sure if Christine is delusional for thinking it was okay to try to kiss people asking for a picture. I would suggest not paying to get a picture taken with her, but I would have suggested that in the first place. Okay, we're now going to look over Chris Chan's resume for a bit here, because I think it's relevant. Please note that Christine has by now decided that it's impossible for her to get a job, for various reasons. But this resume was from before that, in the far off year of 2009. The Game and Hobby Place, Charlottesville, Virginia. Primary duties, I volunteered to help out as the gym leader's assistant for the Pokemon Trading Card Game League. I have taught many children how to play the game with care and respect, constructed their 60 card decks from their scattered collection with sound thought and speed skimming skills. I also watched over the children as I have played with them in the Pokemon Trading Card Game. Functional skills, elbow grease strength, good people slash social skills, quick construction skills from scratch, speed thinking, transferable skills, all of the above. This is for looking for a job as a comic book artist. Yeah, the skills sound pretty transferable, don't they? I'm not even sure what elbow grease strength is, but I'm pretty sure Chris has never had it. So Chris also listed a job he kept for less than two months, but this example is way worse even. The game place is somewhere Chris kept causing problems at and was finally kicked out in 2008. So he listed something that wasn't even actually a job, lied about what his position was, and listed a place that he's permanently banned from on his resume. Like, what if a potential employer decided to call Michael Snyder and check up on this? 
I know, this resume would actually go straight into the trash, but if they actually did call up the gameplays and try to verify these claims, I can only imagine how things would have gone down. I would like to cover this resume in depth later, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Suffice to say, Chris spent a lot of time complaining about trolls and being hacked, as usual not seeming to realize that most people never lose control of their sites, and it could in fact be taken as a sign of incompetence. Also bragging about being featured in Nintendo Power. But what I really need to talk about wouldn't happen until late 2017, when it became apparent that someone behind the scenes was feeding Christine ideas. It started with Christine becoming convinced that characters from the video game Hyperdimension Neptunia were invading Quickville. This was not so out of the ordinary to tip anyone off, probably. I don't know much about the game, by the way, so I'm sorry if I sound like an uncultured American here. When it became extremely apparent was when many thinly veiled jokes and references to the Holocaust and Nazis started showing up in Quickville events. Chris has per her perhaps the worst working knowledge of World War II I've ever seen and so was completely oblivious to all the references, as far as we can tell. Allow me to read you the most egregious post from the 15th of November. Attention, everyone. The post Facebook just recommended is appropriate for the good news, with some bad I have to share. Operation Barbarossa was well and good. Silvana Rose Chu has been rescued. There was a battle of the war of our new common enemy that lasted the past couple of days. We lost a few good soldiers in the process. May they rest in peace that their efforts were not in vain. Also, after Sylvana got captured, until the mutual foe is down for good at least, Count Graduon and Quickville's Christine Weston Chandler signed a peace treaty, as Graduon offered his troops and services for the effort. The fight was north beyond Ruckersville, and the commander of the enemy waves were going to push the fight into Charlottesville. Thankfully, with the help of the Quick Defense Army Division, my Autobots, and my family, our large group kept the enemy back. Then, Christine initiated a very smart operation. Fine old solution. There were cloakers and similar bad people of interest in Quickville, not counting Graduon and his crew. They rounded the cloakers and baddies up, and in a large plot of land Graduon donated, a prison camp with great facilities for reforming the bad pawns to good people. After rounding up the cloakers and bad guys there, our foes retreated. And our groups of brave and powerful heroes are free to return to their homes and rest. Built on Quickville's soil, not in the city though, outside of the city. Graduon donated a lot of land to build prison camps full of large ovens to keep the people warm. And even top-notch dentistry with well-trained doctors also running the clinic. The camps also have some of the best showers a prisoner can ask for. Shower stalls with privacy walls. We all in Charlottesville, Ruckerville, all places to the north of us. And the people of Quickville can sleep more safely now. Your shares to the game industry goddesses really helped us in this battle. Thank you everyone for your love, kindness, and most generous support. Please continue to offer your shares to them for any and all other future conflicts here on our world, and in all of the other worlds, realities, and dimensions. Have a great day, Earth. We've all helped make it more safe. So after being called a Nazi, Christine set the record straight a couple weeks later claiming that all of the ideas from the last post were actually from Count Graduon, who is the big bad of Sonichu and basically a personification of how horrible graduating high school was for Chris. In case you're wondering, Idea Guy would create images and sound files, things like that, basically showing news of things that were happening in Quickville. So Christine seemed to have no choice but to roleplay along. And how much does Christine actually believe of this? Well, I'm not sure about the Nazi stuff, but let's read about how much it hurt Chris to find out that Rose Chu had been transgender all along. This was as recently as December 6th. Go ahead and comment, please. Okay, who's ready to have their minds totally royally fucked up? Rosie, our prime Rose Chu, sweetheart of Sana Chu, was born, as a Pichu, male. The damned trolls were correct. Up until around the 4 cent garbage adventure, Rosie did have not a vagina, but a penis. She had the operation to become fully woman and give birth to Christine, Roberta, and Sarah. I felt super mortified and beyond shocked when she came out to me as a trans woman herself. Since when I created her after Sonichu around 2000, I had created her to be a female-only Pokemon like a Kangaskhan. But apparently, even though I am creator, apparently I am not a total goddess over my own city and creations. So I will now put this to everyone online for their responses. 
Do you like it that for once the trolls were right? Or would you rather I revert back to telling everyone in Book 15 that our Miss Rosie Rosechew was always female? She wanted me to come forward with her truth on her behalf. As much as it really hurts me deep, I really feel like I should be reeled into my Pokeball and stored in the PC a while. I accept my Rose, my Rose, as having been born male. That is all. You'll see the relevance here in a second. For the uninitiated, way too much drama started when a much younger Chris saw Rose Chew fan art where she was depicted with a dick, or a pickle as Chris put it. After this post, a fan basically tells her that she doesn't have to do everything the fans say, to which Christine replies and says that it was actually Rose Chew herself who told her about it. Then she conducted a poll on whether to just retcon this or to keep her as born male. The first option would hurt Rose Chew and the second option would hurt Christine. You would think a trans woman would be able to accept this a little easier. Anyway, Kiwi Farms eventually docks the idea guy and he disappeared so I'm not quite sure how canon all these changes are at this point. But this is a very long and complicated subject so there's going to be a part 2 when I get around to it. Just that's about all the time I have for you today. So do I think she's delusional? Yes, to some extent. I think Chris Chan lives partially in the real world and partially in Quickville. I personally can't imagine what that must be like, but I guess she must have fun. In the next video, we'll discuss how she seems to be dating fictional characters she created as of this year. So make sure to show up again when I get around to making another video. Thanks to everyone for watching. I'd like to thank all my subscribers, and if you're new here and like the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe because there will be more of this eventually. Chris Chan content isn't my first priority, but nobody ever seems to cover recent events, so I'm going to slowly get into it. I'd also like to thank Christine Weston Chandler, because there wouldn't be a video without a subject, and the Quickie and Kiwi Farms, because I don't have time or the energy to keep up on all this myself. Also, shoutouts to Four Loco and Abby, and yeah, everyone else in the world, I guess. Have a great day, everyone. And keep those damn Nazis out of Equestria.